What's up guys, Axis here with day 5 of Modeling Week and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to create neon effects uh, inside Cinema 4D using different logos or even text. Uh, you can apply it to basically anything as long as it's a spline. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to be showing you how to create an, uh, a traceable uh, file that a, um, Cinema 4D can actually read uh, inside Illustrator. I could use Photoshop for this, but I don't feel like Photoshop's um, technique of actually tracing the object is that accurate, so I'd rather use uh, Illustrator. Um, there's lots of tutorials how to do it on Photoshop, but I just thought I'd do one on Illustrator. Um, I'll probably leave a link to one, it won't be mine because I don't think I've done one. Uh, but yeah, I'll have an example of what you can create with this. Um, so yeah, I just did this in Octane, uh, and it didn't take me too long. So. Let's just get into it. I'm just going to drag this into Illustrator. It's just a PNG with a background that is transparent, which you can do by enabling alpha layers uh, in Photoshop or uh, basically just exporting in something like a PNG or something with alpha layers. Um, by default, the alpha, alpha layer isn't showing in Illustrator, so what we do is uh, Control or Command Shift D which will make sure that we can actually see the parts that are transparent. So now what we can do is we can trace image. Uh, I'm going to go 16 colors. It wouldn't really be um, needed to do 16 colors for this. You could probably go shades of gray or black and white or something, but I just always use 16 colors. So it's almost done. Uh, and as you can see it's added the background back, we'll fix that in a second. What you do is now click expand and now we've got the trace. If we expand the layers option here, the layers are on the sidebar, I'm using I think it's CS6, uh, I don't think I'm using CC. Uh, we can we can just turn off the individual layers till we find the one that is the uh, white background layer. And you can delete this by clicking the still delete icon down here. And now we've just got the raw trace of this. The other objects are just the two parts of the logo that we need. So now we've got that, we can go to save as, um, and then what we can do is we can save this as SOAR logo uh, AI. So if I just click save now, you're not going to want to save this as the version that you're on, you're going to want to go down to Illustrator 8, which can be read by um, Cinema 4D. You might miss uh, some like information so you can just save this as a normal version if you've got like a really complicated object that you've spent ages making or something. But uh, for Cinema 4D you get an error if you use like CS6 and to my knowledge uh, Illustrator 8 works fine for uh, every version currently. So now that I've saved that I can just close down Illustrator and we can go ahead and drag this into Cinema 4D. And we have this scale uh, box, so I'm just going to leave it on 1 and click OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero this out by going to the coordinates and uh, going zero and tabbing to zero again. Uh, and there we have it. We have the object and uh, I'm going to connect both these objects by selecting them, right clicking, going to connect objects and delete and moving this outside the null object, which now we can now delete. So I can call that logo. And now that we've got that, what I can do is I can go into the points mode and we've got all these points here that we can mess about with. Um, there might be a lot of troubleshooting that we'll have to do here, but um, it'll be worth it for the end uh, result. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start on a corner like this, and I'm going to make the uh, the interpolation hard. So basically I'll sort of move the, uh, the splines um, kind of like curve here, to put it simply. As you can see now the line's straight, but we're not even going to be using the, uh, we're not going to be seeing this side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, break the segment. Uh, you might have to kind of experiment with breaking different parts of the segment, but basically what you do is you can copy one of the points by holding command, that point didn't work, but that's why I did it, and then you drag along the X, and as you can see this is, uh, this is the wrong point. We're going to want to move this point that I'm hovering over right now. So what we do is we copy the X value and then we move this point away. Now we've got the information that we need. And then we just select this X 
uh, on the, the point that we need and then control V and it goes back to the original point. And now I'm going to break the segment and hopefully, fingers crossed, it will work, which it didn't. Oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. We go to object and close spline, which is off. And you'll see one bit of the spline opening here. So I guess we'll just do this part first because it should be easier since it's already open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. We can see which point is uh, the uh, the point that uh, needs to be moved, which is this one, which is lucky. Uh, and then I'm going to switch the interpolation to hard. And then I'm going to rotate around this a bit. And then just move this back. Uh, sometimes you also have that problem where the uh, it's the wrong point that you're moving and it will look like that and it'll look all weird. But don't worry, just use the technique that I showed you at the start, which I'll be using a lot more. So I'm going to go and then make this a, a default kind of uh, point. That's a whole number, so make it like 40 or 20 or something like that. So you remember it when you're doing all these points. Uh, so now that we've got that, we can click on this uh, the shoulder part and we can right click and go to... Where is it? Chamfer. We can chamfer this. And I'll create a perfect... Uh, perfect little uh, bezier curve in the line and I'm going to want to do this again as you can see we've got that problem that I was talking about a second ago uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this X point here and then we're going to move this all the way over here because it's the point we need click this point and paste it and again we're going to repeat the steps of doing uh, hard interpolation we're going to move this back and we have the problem again so since this is zeroed out, what we can do is not even have to copy the Z. We can just click this, move it away to 40, like so. Click on this point and then go to zero and it will be zeroed out. Uh, it's also good to remember the chamfer uh, radius, which I didn't do. So if we go to a set radius like 10, oops. And also bearing in mind, if you click here, it will make the, the uh, line flat, which is not what we want. So make sure you click E before you change anything. Also, you might want to move this further uh, away because if we make the pipes quite big uh, of the, the neon uh, fluorescent light, then it might look a bit weird. So I'm only going to do about two points because you guys will get the gist of what I'm actually going for here. So I'm also going to do this point down here that I was talking about a second ago. Uh, in fact, now this point's already open, so we might as well just utilize it. Uh, but as you can see, there's been an extra bit of splite. Oh. Oh, 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 it's just in the line. Okay. Right, so yeah, we can use the point that I was just talking about there. So if we just go here and we can go ahead and repeat the break segment part. Delete the spline, we don't need it anymore. Uh, and then we can just do this kind of corner bit here. Drag this down a bit. Down to 40. Luckily, we didn't have that spline problem. I have a feeling that's going to happen on this one though. Uh, yep, so what I do is I click this one, go to 40, and this one right back to zero. Oops. And we can click both these points and chamfer them right at the same time. Save a bit of time. And 10 for the radius. Uh, these also might be a bit close so you can move them away, but uh, as far as I can see, I don't think I'm going to make the pipes that big. And then what you do from here is a really simple... Uh, a sweep nerve so just hold alt while you're clicking on the sweep and then go to circle and then we can reduce the radius here or we can use the scale tool as you can see still looking fine if you have a logo with lots of hard points like here the x the uh the sweep nerves will look very weird at this point so what i'm going to want to do is i'm going to want to either sham for this or uh, kind of try and fix it slightly like that so now if we put this back on it will look a little less weird uh, obviously you could do something like moving this bit away so it doesn't look so uptight uh, but then we have a weird problem there uh, how about I go and chamfer this as well chamfer fixes everything it didn't really there but Move this slightly over here. I actually made it look a lot worse. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that. 
basically just chamfer the points uh, and they should look fine as long as the uh, the pipes aren't so big that um, you know it's, it's gonna start clipping and stuff like that also there's a point here that's um uh, there's obviously been where I, I clicked the um, uncheck the close spline so we could do this here as well um, so if I just go and I'm gonna make the interpolation hard so we don't have any issues with that again down to 40 and this one we're gonna have the issue with also an interpolation problem hard interpolation and then once again interpolation problem so we're gonna make this 40 make this part 0 and then we're gonna chamfer these points just to ensure that we don't have any clipping or weird edges if you're wondering uh, you can select all the points by just doing a simple controller command A oh, voice crack <laughs> uh, so there we go that is just basically how you do that um, and then what you can, oh my goodness what has happened here I have a feeling that one of the points are stretched yep so if I make this I think this will ruin it yeah so if you hold shift to move this up it won't do anything now oh maybe melt the points Leave that point there, see if that makes a difference. Yup, that's fine. So obviously my little uh, way of doing this isn't perfect. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it for this part. Uh, we can also add a bunch of different uh, uh, wires and stuff like that. So uh, I could just add like a, a little connector or something to this. So we'll just go and create a cylinder for the start make it editable and then we'll go MK and then go to the loop and then we'll just like select this part with the loop selection scale it in a bit making the whole command or control and go down a bit and then we've got this weird kind of indentation to make this look not so weird we can go to 30 on the phone and we can also bevel these edges to make them look, look a bit better. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, put this in a, a subdivision surface in a second. So you won't really see any of that uh, stuff. And I'm going to put this in here. As you can see, it's not the most amazing looking thing I've ever made. But uh, I'm just going to scale it down a bit. It'll do its job, I think. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little spline to go. I'm going to go to front mode again. Go to Bezier, my least favorite spline, just because it's going to be quicker in this case to create a a winding wire, I guess. And then we can kind of have it like leaning on some parts of this and as well, I see a lot of people doing is hanging off a little uh, cable tie uh, creation up here so as you can see I've kind of created a bend there also if we go into the top view we can just uh, make this waver about the object basically you just repeat this process a bunch of times Really time consuming, but uh, you get a really nice result in the end, which is a plus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big, uh, a big um, plane at the background, which will act as our wall. I'm going to put this into Z, scale it up a lot, using the T scale tool, or either that or changing the width and the height, and then moving this back a bit. There we go, and then we can add our little uh, cable tie uh, knob thing, my jiggy. Uh, I'm gonna go to front view just to kind of make it look nice. So I'm just gonna put this into Z once again, scale it down, 
make the height smaller and then I can just click C select all the points with the live selection tool which is up here you can uh, do 9 to uh, quickly select it uh, as a shortcut obviously and then I'm just going to do this weird uh, model shape thing with Jiggy, it's not that obviously you could spend more time on doing this but I'm just doing command uh, drags and then I can um, move it about with the E you just need to get used to switching between E and uh, T for the move and the scale object and then your life will be a lot easier and more productive so if I put this inside a subdivision as you can see I've kind of uh, screwed up the middle bit which we can fix by going into loop selection selecting this and scaling it in a bit so we won't have those little edges um, so yeah that, that looks all right for the uh, little cable tie I guess so you could spend a bit more time making it look nice but I'm just kind of giving you the guidelines for what you can create here Okay, and then I'm going to want to put this in the wall uh, along with fixing the spline so that it actually guides around it because currently it doesn't. Make sure it doesn't clip with the wall, otherwise that's not going to look too good. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's it's not exactly leaning on this. You could add some uh, simulating tags to uh, make sure that these points all stay uh, together and they don't clip but that's pretty close to looking good right so I might also turn up the subdivision surface I didn't really see that much of a difference never mind uh, and then also we can go and put the spline uh, into a sweep while holding alt and then going to hold shift and then going to circle and there we have go. We can also create some uh, twisty wires, which I believe I did uh, day one or two. Um, so I'll link you guys to that. Uh, but basically, that is all you need to do. You just keep repeating these processes. Also, make sure that this is aligned properly. Because I didn't manage to make it. There we go. Looks like it's going into that little nub in there. You can also maybe add a little light around there. And um, yeah, one last thing I thought to do is make a duplicate of this and make the uh, circle about, let's go four, almost half size, and then we can create a little transparent object. So uh, create a material down here, uh, transparency, and then we can change the brightness to about 90, and maybe, what else could I do? I didn't also uh, turn up the refraction a bit. I used Octane, so uh, I'm not too good with this uh, kind of normal material stuff. But yeah, I'm just going to create that and I'll create like a glow material, which you guys could uh, create a, 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 something with luminance and then you could um, add um, what's it called uh, global illumination, which will light up your scene with the uh, luminance. But uh, if you're just a simple, a simple person, then you can use a glow object, I guess. Also switch up the colors, stuff like that. Uh, and there we go, that's basically how it will uh, look in your uh, re uh, viewer, along with this little cable. So yeah, it's a pretty nice effect, and uh, you can use it for a lot of different things. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I just showed you the core of it, but that's really all you should need. Um, you just repeat all the process. Uh, you know, just wash, rinse, repeat, and do the same thing over and over again for the same uh, kind of effect. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, leave a like, and if you want to see the rest of the series, please subscribe, because I've got a bunch of other uh, new tutorials I'm going to be making, obviously, because it's a week of tutorials. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.